Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Nancy Drew Times during spooky season. I'm so excited because this video has been in the works for the past couple of months. You know, a lot of heart has gone into this content. And also, too, because I am getting to collaborate with one of my absolute favorite Nancy Drew content creators, the Wizard Kitten, Caitlin from Wizard Kitten on YouTube and Instagram. I absolutely love her content and I'm so excited to collaborate with her on some spooky content for you guys. So um, I actually found uh, Caitlin's channel during the pandemic and you just, it was, I think, during when Midnight Salem was coming out. Uh, she had a video where she would she reviewed Midnight in Salem, and it was so hilarious. And also, everything she said was just so on point and so true. And from there, I have watched all of her videos. So um, she is truly an awesome, awesome YouTuber. And I'm just so excited to have her here today. So um, please welcome Caitlin from Wizard Kitten. Hey, how are you, Caitlin? I'm so good. Thank you so much for those kind words. That was so nice. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> if you just want to take a second, you know, tell everyone here on the channel just about what you do on yours um, and just kind of like what kind of content do you uh, put out as a Nancy Drew content creator? Absolutely. So I am Nancy Drew obsessed. I've been playing the game since I've I was 11 and I post walkthroughs and Nancy Drew analysis videos on my channel. Nancy Drew analysis videos where I do deep dives into kind of themes of the games. I also do Sims 4 kind of uh, collabs with Nancy yes. Drew where I'll try to build uh, locations from the games or build homes for some of the characters in the games. They're my two favorite games. I love putting them together and just exploring story, mystery, and Nancy Drew. And I do uh, a streamathon of the Nancy Drew games. I started during the pandemic as a way to kind of connect with other people, and yes. it has become more of an annual thing now, which makes me very happy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Actually, I and I need to mention this now, um, and I will totally tag this in the video, but I just watched your recent build of the Deadly Device. And uh, if you guys have not seen these builds, you need to go check out these builds because I have Sims 4 too, and I play it, but I am terrible at building things. <laughs> <laughs> like structurally, I am not good at this. And so every time you have built something, I'm just blown away at the accuracy. Like it just truly looks just like how it does in the games and the Delhi device, I can already tell it's just gonna be so good. So um, that, and also when you play, I can't remember the exact title of it, but when you play Sims as the Nancy Drew characters and then, oh, yeah. there, were, it, and then there were none or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yes. I have a couple like Let's Play series. I did Let's Play The Sims 4 Nancy Drew where I had Nancy and the whole crew like grow up, have kids, live their lives beyond <laughs> the games. <laughs> and I love and, then, that. An, and I love then there that. were none series where I, um, I, I basically play out Agatha Christie's and then there were none where they all slowly it. die one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that too, because it's so funny. Like, you know, yeah. Sims is already funny. Like when you make a pool and then you put a fence around it and you just make your Sims like swim around yeah. until they, yeah, yeah. We're chaotic people. That's okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so um, you guys need to go check out our channel. I'll make sure to link it. Um, so you, if you are on YouTube, you probably saw this video and uh, it's the top 10 spookiest Nancy Drew game. Games. Oh, it's spooky season. We got to talk about this. And um, I'm excited because me and Wizard Kitten got together to collaborate on well, what is our rankings on the top 10 spookiest games. Um, but you know, anytime there's a ranking, anytime we've got to sort through things, we got to have a system in place. So uh, we got together and kind of created an organized uh, system together. And so I will let Caitlin explained that because she does so good at explaining the instructions <laughs> of the ranking system. <laughs> so I'm going to pass it along to you. Thank you so much. Um, so what we decided, we kind of went with a three category system with a system of three stars for each of those categories. The higher the stars, the higher the game ranks in each of those categories. So the highest possible score would be nine stars out of nine stars. Our three categories for ranking spooky games, and I really honed in on the word spooky. I don't know if you did too, Carter. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
So uh, our three categories, purposeful unease, and that's kind of the environment and the ambiance of a game. What is the game doing to purposefully make us feel a little bit uneasy, a little bit spooky? What are those design elements that kind of enhance the game's spooky feel? And then we have purposeful spooky elements as the second category. So these are the things like the jump scares. These are the things that the developers put in the game specifically to scare us. And how effective are those purposeful spooky elements? Are they there? And do they actually scare us? Are they actually spooky? And then third is the music and environmental details. Just because the music and kind of those environmental designs are a little bit separate than the purposeful unease, it's less of a story yeah. element and more of a, what are the actual game things that are being added in to supplement that spookiness? So if it has really spooky music that really helps hit those spooky vibes, if there's environmental details like fog, flashing lights, any sorts of little details like that that were added into the game, can it bolster that spooky effect? Oh, absolutely. That was the perfect way to describe it. That's why I, I literally <laughs> pass it to you. But no, that's so true. And those are things that I think we don't really think about, you know, purposeful unease. Like I know I don't like sit down and think, oh yeah, that's what makes this game spooky. But when you really look at it, when you hone in on that, that is the, that is that that's where the spookiness lies you know mm -hmm. is when there are questions left unanswered or yes. you know things you just don't get a full picture of right away and i love that so yeah I, it's gonna be so fun okay so let's go ahead and kick off our top 10 spookiest mm -hmm. nancy drew games uh caitlin i'm gonna pass along to you for the number 10 spot and we'll just go from there I'm so excited. I love talking Nancy Drew games with people. <laughs> <laughs> same here, same here. So now it's funny that you mentioned um, that the Midnight in Salem review may have brought you, <laughs> introduced you to my channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, the My number 10 spot for the spooky games. And we, these are kind of like the games that were meant to be supernatural and spooky. My number in 10 spot does have to go to Midnight in Salem. I gave it one star in purposeful unease and one star in music and environmental details because there were so many opportunities to do a spooky Halloween mystery surrounded with witches and ghosties and there was almost nothing there that really got that message across I mean we could put jack-o-lanterns around but that doesn't make me feel spooked that may, that's like cute that's adorable <laughs> Good point. Yeah. those are fun spooky vibes and there are autumn leaves blowing in the trees which I appreciate but it's like the the actual purposeful unease wasn't created there I gave it a two for purposeful spooky elements because they did try. They tried to have spooky elements <laughs> that would actually scare people. The blood on the ceiling and Nancy's nightmare, the the jump scares when Nancy is exploring the Hathorne house or the graveyard, they tried. But what they did in the game and still upsets me to this day and makes me rage is they they warned us that those spooky moments were about to happen by kind of switching the camera into like all of a sudden we're not in control anymore and now we're watching something almost like a movie. Yeah. So when they do that, it completely pulled me out of the immersion, the immersion of it and was like, okay, be prepared. Something spooky is going to happen. <laughs> and then it's no longer spooky. Well, then I'm like, okay, well, like ghost is going to come out of somewhere now. And the fact that the ghost also like the graphics of the spooky ghosts were kind of like, um, not there <laughs> yeah no that's so true that is that's yeah. a really good point yeah. really good point i actually felt very similar at, in, in the same way when i was ranking it i was saying that you know there's not um there are the scary moments that are actually in the game felt a little forced you know what i mean like it, it didn't feel like it was naturally occurring like it should i felt like I, oh okay i'm supposed to be scared right now <laughs> like i'm oh be scared you know but i really right. wasn't so or you know it wasn't spooked at all so that's a good point that's a good point mm -hmm. i totally agree so where did midnight in salem fall for you so actually surprisingly uh I actually thought, and I was very sure about this, I, I was very sure that Midnight in Salem was going to be in my number 10 spot, but it was actually in my number 9 spot. Um, and there's another game that fell in my number 10 spot, um, which was actually The Haunted Carousel. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so I think because The Haunted Carousel is a little bit more peppy for me, I think that's probably why I put it down on the list, even though I love the game more than Midnight in Salem. I think mm -hmm. the game, the Haunted Carousel for me was a little bit more peppy 
in its overall like just gameplay and so even though there are just very minimal spooky you know elements to it i think that's why i had to put midnight in salem because it was a, at least <laughs> at least attempting to be more yeah. of a of a spooky game you know what i mean totally um, I yes so um i don't know like the haunted carousel I just rem I remember playing it thinking that it was going to be more intense like I mm -hmm. think I I think I remember uh when the trailer for it came out you remember like when Nancy was on that pink yes. phone and she's like I gotta go I gotta go right now I'll call you later I gotta go I gotta go right now just like drops the phone and runs away I'm like oh my gosh this game sounds terrifying but it actually was more like very like easy pacing mm -hmm. um and just more of a slower game to me uh than right. what it was I think anticipated for I don't know if maybe like when they were making the game they thought it was going to be more you know just more in thrilling more like scary but it just ended up not for me you know not being mm -hmm. as much in that way so that's why I scored it lower I gave it actually mm -hmm. I think a one in everything across the board uh sure. in purposeful and ease spooky elements and music and environment um, so, mm -hmm. um, as far as the haunted carousel goes, like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, where did you fall on that? Sure. It's funny because it was my number nine. So we just oh. kind of swapped our nine and our tens. It's yeah, perfect. we did. We did. <laughs> I gave the haunted carousel the exact same score as Midnight in Salem. Mm -hmm. And then I just ranked Midnight in Salem lower as the tiebreaker because I have a vendetta against it. <laughs> 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 so, so that's why, if I'm being perfectly honest, um, mm -hmm. the Haunted Carousel totally agree with you. It does have such a light, peppy feel to it. It's got yes. kind of the jaunty carnival type music. Yes. It's sunny outside. For the most part, it's like a very pleasant game. I did decide to give it a two for the purposeful spooky elements, just because I thought the haunted house was executed mm -hmm. quite nicely. I would have loved more for it. Like it, it's a pretty oh, yeah, simple absolutely. location, but like the saw, like the saw noise is in there the woo noises in the haunted house itself <laughs> well, that was perfect that was perfect impression right <laughs> you know what i mean i'm not crazy <laughs> those kinds of things i thought added a nice little bit of like we tried to make the haunted house kind of spooky and when you oh, actually yeah. get to explore it a little more and find the secret areas i think those were kind of creepy too so mm -hmm. oh, that, that, and that's Only fair that. i think that's fair you know because it that I think was supposed to be the spookiest part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was definitely the darkest, you know, in yeah. terms of like environment. And so, I, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that was probably like maybe the spookiest location of the game. And sure. if anything, that's where the most spook I think comes from is okay. that particular spot of the game. So yeah, 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 that's funny that we switched our 10 and nine up. Um, <laughs> love it. Ranking. Oh, me too, love it, love it, love it. Um, but yeah, no, okay. So I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the next slot. So we did number mm -hmm. 10 and we did number nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess I'll do number eight spot, right? Yes, let's okay. go for it. Okay, so number eight, I actually ranked, and I think our spots are different for this as mm -hmm. well. I mm -hmm. gave this to uh, The Haunting of Castle Malloy. Sure. Um, I, I think I, I ranked this, I'm trying to like find it. Yes, okay, so I gave it twos across everything. Mm -hmm. um, two in Purposeful Unease, um, two in Purposeful Spooky Elements, and two in Music and, and, and Environment. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I think what I love most about this, this uh, game itself is just that everywhere is, there's a lot of like, similarity everywhere you go mm -hmm. like everywhere is dark everywhere <laughs> is like green and blue hues like it, yeah. like everything is just very almost like a saddened dark and cloudy vibe like i don't know like i, I that's how i feel when i play it yeah. uh, i think the pub is maybe the most lit and warm place um but other than that i mean you're mostly outside you're mo it's mostly dark you know mm -hmm. <laughs> half the castle is gone <laughs> i mean <laughs> It's just, I think the environment does a good job of just displaying a spooky vibe. And mm -hmm. uh, the game itself has a lot of, um, I think why it why it fell number eight in my list is because there's not something necessarily um, so intense about it to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just much more like chill spooky. <laughs> like, yeah. Spooky, but it's like chill spooky. Like I like, I like seeing the, 
you know, the random doll on the ground, you know, with the sheep. I mean, it's like, oh man, like, what is this? You know, mm -hmm. I think probably the spookiest, like, you know, place for me in the game was actually the nursery because <laughs> being in, in whew, being in a vacant nursery, an empty nursery, and there's like all this toy, broken toys and thing. I was, I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. um yeah but no I think that's why it fell number eight for me is because it was just much although it was all very like I think they excelled in all the spooky factors it just wasn't mm -hmm. as spooky as other Nancy Drew games are so mm -hmm. um yeah I don't know how you feel about Haunted of uh, Castle Malloy or what your number eight spot was but yeah 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 I think you make a lot of really great points about Haunting of Castle Malloy for sure. It does have, it relies a lot on the ambiance of the game yes, to kind of get yes. the spookiness across. The actual like moments of scare factor aren't um, not quite as intense as some other games. I totally yes. see what you're saying. And like the coolness throughout, I think yes. is totally <laughs> spot on. That's actually, I gave it a three for music and environmental details, which kind of bumped Haunting of Castle Malloy up on my list to my number five spot. And I think purely because I did like that kind of coolness and that kind of um, the emptiness, that big empty space felt very creepy to me. Being able to hear the the supposed banshee noises all the time, the crows flying around and bombing us, the, the, the creepy lighting in the the broken castle with the the curtains like waving in the wind yes, yes that's a good point oh my gosh yes I remember yeah. being in that uh I don't know what it's called I guess maybe like it would be considered the great hall of this castle but you know you know just in that main location where the fireplace is at and it's in that area where you can see the moon and there's like what you said there's like that fabric in the, you know like uh in the mm -hmm. skyline just like waving yes that is such a very ambient place to be at in the game yeah yes yeah in a weird way, it would make like a great ASMR study room because it's right. <laughs> yes, it's it very truly, relaxing. it really would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the 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 banshee scare moment in the nursery still gets me to this day when she's all of a sudden in the window. Yes. Like that one, um, it, it still gets me to this day. So it, as far as like the scare factor, that one ranked a little bit higher for me. So my number eight spot, I did twos across the board, like you did for Haunting of Castle Malloy for Curse of Blackmore Manor. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, which I, I, I surprised myself a little bit with that because I was like, really? I, I, I thought Curse of Blackmore Manor would rank higher for me. Mm -hmm. um, the reasoning, I think, for that, I gave it twos across the board, is because the, the spooky elements end up being kind of almost spread out in a way. Okay. And yeah. like, and, and in a way very consistent like there's almost a predictable pattern to them i think so like okay. nancy will have like a nightmare in the middle of the night or she'll see the red eyes in the window or the lady in black is all of a sudden in the hallway like those things are super creepy and spooky um but they didn't necessarily like surprise me what surprised me is ethel <laughs> like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ethel point. still scares me <laughs> oh yeah ethel ethel literally terrifies me like <laughs> yeah yeah to this day, she is absolutely so terrifying. yeah she's um, just there <laughs> just yeah just pop <laughs> and we don't even really get to talk to her very much so right. um but yeah no good points like i think that's fair to say that about curse of blackmore manor because mm -hmm. i think it does kind of have a very uh, cyclic, you know, scary things happening, I guess. Yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just one jump scare with Ethel. It was like- Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Seriously. So it was very, there Deirdre was, I guess, a pattern Salem. more to the scary elements for sure. And as far as like Curse of Blackmore Manor though, was it when you were playing the game, was there ever like a, moment I guess like what was your I guess your scariest moment other than Ethel jump scares like what was maybe like your spookiest like this is a really spooky place or yes. just overall feeling I'm getting right now in the game totally for me it started right at the very beginning Okay. with when Nancy's walking up to the house, we have no control over her. She's walking <laughs> painfully slowly. Yes. Very spooky moors up to the door, like just stepping so slowly. <laughs> and it, then she gets to the door and we hear Nancy. <laughs> she just turns and these, these red eyes and Nancy's reaction is just to like stand there and be like, oh, this is scary. And she turns back to the door. Like me, I would be like, oh my gosh, let me into the door. <laughs> Nancy just like lackadaisically knocks the knocker. 
goodness, you hurry up, we're about to die. So yeah, that's, it's that's so my scary. And it's so dramatic too. Like you're just, that is awesome. That, that it, I love, I love the banging on the door. Um, yes. But that's so true. I mean, like, you're like, Nancy, get inside. Like we're yes. in danger, obviously. Um, <laughs> yes, good point. I, I actually, to, uh, you were talking about the lady in black, you know, when we mm -hmm. see the, that, um, I remember when I first walked out of the uh, door of, the, of Nancy's room and that, mm -hmm. that scene was happening. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that this was one of, I think, one of the very first times that the series used a cutscene of mm -hmm. great length. I think, mm -hmm. I, 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 and I don't know if that's if that's 100% correct. It may not be, but I'm like thinking back and like, I think Danger on Deception Island was the first time that I can remember, uh, remember like a cutscene happening. It's like at the very beginning when she sees Katie and they're walking to the boat. Yeah. And that was a cut, that was, I, I, I don't, other than that, because the game before that's Haunted Carousel, I think those are like Danger on Deception Island and uh i think in at shadow ranch it's the horse is like yeah you know, running but mm -hmm. this is this is they're starting to implement more cutscenes into the games at this point right. um and in this one so it's like one of the of the very first cutscenes that we're getting in a game and it is very like okay so like you said earlier like we have no control over this scene like we are right. just immersed into the scene we have to experience the scene like and it was so unexpected because walking out the door i'm like oh i gotta hurry up i gotta go to the you know the forge or i gotta go to the conservatory or wherever i was headed right yes and i was like why can't i click yeah <laughs> she goes towards it <laughs> and like um hello there's this big giant like cloaked thing just floating in the hallway and nancy's like mm, wonder what this is <laughs> going nancy no it. yeah like <laughs> go back go back go back and the corner it was the corner like we're going around the corner mm -hmm. and we don't know if this the like, cloaked thing is going to reveal to us mm -hmm. i thought that was and I guess, oddly enough, one of my spookiest moments because I just, it was so unexpected and I didn't know what was gonna happen. Sure. Um, but yes, and uh, yeah, it was just, did not know at all. I could totally see that. <laughs> yep. yeah. But actually, uh, Curse of Blackmore Manor ended up being uh, a little bit higher up on my list. It was actually number four for mm. me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And only because like, it o I only had one more point up, one more point than you did. You had two mm. across, and sure. I just under purposeful spooky elements. I actually gave it a three, yeah, because there were just too many, t <laughs> too many times where I just. And I will say, I did. I think also maybe something that can affect this too is like maybe when you play the game, because I played this game when I was mm. seven, so mm -hmm. it was you know obviously a lot more terrifying for me yeah so yeah <laughs> and, um, I like I, I I think like so much unease and spookiness in this game like I don't know if this Linda character that we cannot see I don't know if she's gonna rip the curtains back and be a werewolf and get me you know what I mean yeah so I I think that's maybe why uh Curse of Blackmore Manor was a little bit higher for me Sure. Um, it was my second game I ever played, so it Ooh. definitely had a lot of, ooh, you know, kind of like scary vibes, spooky vibes for me. Yeah. But, um, I can totally see what you're saying, though, about it being more patterned. Thinking about it now, looking back, I can totally see how it is much more patterned in its. Sure. Um, yeah. But so very successful at spooky elements, like you're saying. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Number seven slot? Number seven. Yeah. So at number seven, I put Legend of the Crystal Skull. Ooh, and yes. for me, Legend of the Crystal Skull absolutely succeeds in purposeful unease and music and environmental details. Oh, Easy wow. threes in both of those categories. Mm -hmm. The the rain coming down, the the graveyard walk where we're just like walking <laughs> through all of these things, exploring yes. crypts, um, the the thunder and lightning, the power being out, all of that is so spooky. The music is so unsettling, just the different, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not, it's, it's not music that is predictable. It's music that's very like jarring in a way where it's just like, it, it, it's purposefully creating like this feeling of disjointedness in the game, which I love. I think it does a really awesome job at that. 
And the only reason it's lower for me is because I felt like I had to give it a one for the purposeful spooky elements, because the only one we get really is the skeleton man at the beginning. That's the only time that I get anything where it's like trying to actually scare me, except for the spider, but I that might just be a me thing because <laughs> I hate spiders. Um, but the, the, the skeleton man, very effective oh, scare, yeah. like gets me every time. But then that happens right at the beginning of the game and doesn't really happen again. I guess. So that's why it ended up being my number seven. But how about you? Okay, yeah, I love all those details that you mentioned. That's very true. Um, and I personally love this game a lot because it is it is um, where I live. I live in Louisiana. So I love all the Louisiana elements because Louisiana culture is just so French. It has so much, you know, like so much a part of it. And uh, I, loved th I loved that they brought us to New Orleans, like truly brought us to New Orleans. So, um, yeah, I love this game, and actually we're pretty close in our ranking. It, it actually ended up being number six for me, so um, not too far off. I think I actually gave um, the same thing as you. I gave music and environment a three, for sure, and um, I actually gave purposeful spooky elements a two and purposeful unease a two, sure. so um, that's why it ended up being in my number six spot, um, but I, you know, remember the thunder and the lightning and the rain, I thought that was such a great just feature to have as, you know, the environment because it, you know, I, I love those dark, those dark games. Anytime a game is overall just dark, yeah. the environment for me is just, it's just so good. Um, and I thought that was a nice touch, but it's, it's the beginning of the game. I think that is the most successful, one of the most successful beginnings of a game because it started off with that warning and no other game in the Nancy Drew started off with a warning. And uh, I thought that was such a great, great touch. Like, hey, we're warning you to play this game in the dark, you know, mm -hmm. like draw the draw the shades, like close the curtains. Like, <laughs> I, I thought that was such a nice touch, you know, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting geared up to be spooked and it's true like you said the skeleton man was um probably one i think if not like probably the most scary thing that we had you know mm -hmm. other than just the general spooky like ambience of the place there was right. no like actual you know scare you know spook factor right. like mm -hmm. you said i think that's very true i think the only other time mm -hmm. that i was maybe spooked other than that was in renee's room because Renee's yeah. room was like the voodoo and the doll, but then the doll's not there. And all, yeah. all that was very, Renee kind of low-key scared me. Uh, oh yeah, same. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, um, so our our our, um, our our order, our ranking was very close on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was your, uh, it was, you think you mentioned the skeleton man, right? Was your, that was your scariest moment? Yeah, that one. And then um, later in the game when, Nancy's on the phone with Bess mm -hmm. and Bess is just like, oh, I told Dr. Buford that you're super close to getting the skull. <laughs> and Nancy's like, why would you do that? <laughs> As she's in this creepy attic and then the huge bolt of thunder and then the call is dropped and Nancy can't call Bess back. Like mm -hmm. that moment always gets me. That's very much like- Oh, that like gave me chills when you said it. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's like, oh gosh, we got to solve this fast. Yeah, it's just that dead silence of this, the call, like the call noise, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh my gosh, that just, mm -hmm. that gives me like all the spooky vibes. Seriously. <laughs> um, so that was your number seven spot. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So my number seven spot um, was actually Message in a Haunted Mansion. Um, oh. Surprisingly, yes, I know. So I know a lot of people probably rank Message in a Haunted Mansion higher up on their list. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people have, they like, uh, did you play Message in a Haunted Mansion earlier on in your like? Yeah, okay. I was okay. fairly young. Mm -hmm. See, and I think that makes a difference because I did not play it young. Um, yeah. I actually played it later on in life. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, um, mm -hmm. because Danger on Deception Island was my first game, and mm -hmm. then Curse of Blackmore Manor was my second. And oh, sure. Curse of Blackmore Manor I played when I was seven, so right. that one obviously ranks more higher up for me yes. as far as scary, because the association as a child was just scarier. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think Message in a Haunted Mansion, I played, I think it was like really later on. It was more of my middle games, and so I was sure. already like 
maybe 13 or something. So I was gotcha. like, oh, oh, this game is not, <laughs> this game's not spooky at all. You know, kind of type deal. Um, but yeah, no, it, I, I will say though, I, I did give purposeful spooky elements for Message in Haunted Mansion of Three because mm-hmm. I was like, it definitely has plenty of, you know, moments where you're like, ooh, hello, what was yeah. that? Mm-hmm. And um, music and environment details and purposeful honeys, I gave it a two. True. Um, so just, you know, Message in Haunted Mansion, just playing it, you know, I, for me, there were definitely some moments where, you know, we, got answers for some of that spooky stuff like you know what i mean like we got answers to like abby like doing a couple of different things like the telephone and the Mm -hmm. ghostly image in the mirror but Mm -hmm. we didn't get an answer to everything like yeah right there was like some furniture that like moved and warped, Mm -hmm. but we never got an answer to why it did that (laughs) and that bothered me i was like okay um yeah but we yeah but yeah but yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know but just, wait <laughs> just terrified you know um mm-hmm. but yeah overall the game is much it, you know it is on an older platform and playing that i think older like when i was 13 yeah. just wasn't as maybe immersive as maybe another game w- was at that point so sure. um yeah I, I other than than those spooky elements like the only other thing that really maybe like made me feel uh, at ease or like really spooked was the was the attic and again here i am again with you know the darker the environment you know it's true like i don't know why i think when i was in the attic i instantly panicked after i realized that i couldn't get out of the yeah, attic. Yes. and i'm like no no i want to be back in the hall with the light please. and i'm like trying to get out and i'm like oh my gosh i have to actually sit here and think about how to get out of here and i'm like oh, right so far, you know so mm-hmm. um yeah like there was you know that moment but overall i i did i felt safe like I didn't feel like anything sure. was, I, I don't know if that's just because I just knew I thought that I I don't know I don't, I don't know why if I just thought that because the location felt like the lights were on and I knew yeah. everybody was in their locations and spot like I just didn't feel like anything was really gonna and and the students sure. were not like in your face like right. not going to come get you they were much more distant so mm-hmm. like you know, we see a ghost, but it's a shadow from afar or we hear something, but it's, you know what I mean? Like there was yeah. nothing going to like really grab out and get us. And I think that's maybe why I didn't feel so um, worried or panicked throughout the game as maybe sure. other other games have made me more worried and panicked, you know? Totally. Um, but yeah. So I don't know where Message in Haunted Mansion falls for you. Cause if you played it earlier, I feel like that can totally affect uh, how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> And this is, this might be a surprise too, um, when we look at like the whole range of spooky games and how high this one ranked for me. Um, I put Message on Haunted Mansion in my number two spot. Okay. And that's me really, again, leaning into like the word spooky. Because if we're talking scary games, like I know the two that are like the scariest in the series, hands down. But when I'm thinking about like spooky games, Message in a Haunted Mansion gets me. Like, (laughs) It's it sees into my soul and knows exactly how to freak me out. Yes. And I think a lot of the things that you mentioned, the the scares that aren't explained, like mm-hmm. the chair that sinks in the main yes. entry parlor and the swan head that moves yes. that we don't get explanations for, that just tells me real ghosts. That we're, we're, these are real ghosts. Yes. <laughs> and that terrifies me. And I think it's the Golden Gardenia feels like a very real place to me. It feels like an actual like Victorian house that I could walk in. And having been in Victorian houses that have that similar vibe and feel of like, this place is cold. This place thing, there's weird shadows here. There's weird noises here. This place is freaky. This place is haunted. <laughs> and I think it does such a good job um, of doing that and most of it is abby's doing we we figure this out we find this out but she's just like so good at setting them up that it's it it makes it so spooky when nancy's walking around and all of a sudden you hear i see you (laughs) or like this there's this creepy laugh going on and even the even the seance that she sets up where like the ghost is walking past the the window the and the the human scares of like the doors slamming like or That's people true. like a shadow walking past those ones get me every time because it feels like somebody's always watching you in this 
house and that just freaks me out. I don't like that feeling, especially when we find out a little bit of a spoiler alert if you haven't played Message in a Haunted Mansion, fair warning. When we find out that somebody is living in the walls of the house and we don't know about it. <laughs> Every time that happens, I'm like, oh my God, somebody is watching us and we don't know. Is that happening in real life? Am I safe? Oh, like, it just, it, it just, it, it's that creepy spookiness that I just love about Message in a Haunted Mansion. And the music is everything. The soundtrack is easily one of my favorites. Absolutely. I do love this game's music a lot. And it, it goes unsaid that this, this, this soundtrack is truly so good. Um, you know, I love every time that we focus in on a, um, specific like element like that music kind of reflects that so like this mm -hmm. one had to do a lot with like the um chinese calendar and the chinese symbols and so you can actually hear yeah. a little bit of that in the music and i, I really For appreciate sure. that and so yeah but no yeah good point too like yeah we're really more focusing on like the spookier parts of these games not necessarily the scarier parts mm -hmm. but yeah that's true message in a haunted mansion definitely does give you that spooky vibe uh mm -hmm. like like i and i like how you put it too like that you do feel like at all points someone is following you watching you like yeah. that is very true mm -hmm. like that's very that's a very good point um but yeah like i totally see why that would maybe like rank that up higher for you on your list like yeah I, I totally and, and like you that. mentioned i played it as i was pretty young i think i was like 12 and yeah. it, it it was one of my first games and yeah. it's just yeah blankets over it. the head <laughs> yeah i love it and and in, in, in that game uh I, I always think this about this this game every time I, I like just think of it. I would have loved, or I and I think that this maybe even would have made it even more you know exhilarating if we could go outside. Yeah. I would love to go outside and message in a haunted mansion because I think in that game it's supposed to be raining. Uh, oh yeah. Um, I I think I can't remember. Um, but oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Imagine if there was a creepy overgrown Victorian garden that we had yes. to go out into. Oh. oh, that would that would really just cherry on top for Message mm -hmm. on a Mansion. Even though it is already a great game, it yeah. I think, well, oh, man, that would really have made it just even so much more amazing. <laughs> totally. So number six, I put the Captive Curse. <laughs> um, I gave it a three for purposeful and ease and a two for the other categories, a total of seven. I had a lot of sevens, so I had to break a lot of ties um, within the sevens. But Captive Curse, I think, does a really good job of just like constantly freaking us out by like the, the monster alerts all of a sudden. I love the one where it's just like the monster has breached the castle and you're like, oh no, <laughs> that sounds really bad. Yeah. And then having to go out into the woods, the woods are extremely spooky. I love yes. that. The castle itself is really bright, but I think it's just the constant reminders and it's all everyone's talking about. Everyone always yeah. brings the conversation back to, Nancy, you're in imminent danger. You look like the girl, you're gonna be kidnapped by this monster. Oh, so yeah. I think they re really did a good job with the character dialogue and the story of just maintaining that unease throughout. I don't think the purposeful spooky elements like the actual monster scares were as effective as other games for me, which is why I gave it a two. Like it's, it felt pretty obvious that the monster was fake. Whereas like yeah. in other, other games, it didn't feel that way. Like with um, some of the like ghostier ones and the music and environmental details the forest, I think, is spot on. I think the castle and, and the courtyard, too. I love the courtyard and the, the well passageways, I think, are oh. spot on, too. I think the, <laughs> the the floor plan in the castle confuses me, and it's very it, it's just very bright. So it feels almost like it's, it's trying to add some sort of contrast, yeah. almost. But then it, it almost feels just like... I don't know, this this feels fabricated just kind of like the monster does in a way. So that that kind of brought down the environmental details for me a smidge. But yeah, I still think it's a very successful spooky game. But what oh, about yeah. you? Oh, that, that's very fair. Um, yeah, and like you mentioned, though, like, and I just, I guess I just keep coming back to this and I stick by it, but like the darker a game environment yeah. is to me, the the more, I, and, that, and mostly because you can't see what's coming, you don't know what's out there because it's so dark. So mm -hmm. the forest for me was definitely, and the tunnels with the flashlight, yeah. terrifying. Like, I mm -hmm. mean, every time you're down there, you just don't know what's around the corner. So um, I agree with that for sure. I know that I ranked Captive 
the captive curse a little bit higher on mine um sure. i think it was actually number three for me nice. and um yes and i and i gave it a three in purposeful unease and a three mm -hmm. in spooky elements but actually sure. a two in music and environment so i swapped okay. around the those two scores like yeah um, on those but i think the reason why though is because um like there were just so many times where the game like it, it like took a pause so it was like mm -hmm. paced out and then something would happen and then you'd play and then something would happen and yeah. it kept building up to this moment of just i just knew something like was going to reveal at some point yeah. and every time something happened it just my anticipation would just grow and grow and just make me so just nervous you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think that's why the, the especially the unease of this game does and excels so well is because you're right like at first you're just getting there and you're really just getting warmed up to this whole idea of a monster but then you're getting alerts yeah. and those alerts happen randomly and when they do and then you're and you're fighting with ned at the same time yeah you know? and and there's the whole like you said the constant like nancy you look like this uh like like this girl and you're in danger and mm -hmm. the courtyard's on fire when you go to the <laughs> gate. Yes. And then there's like this uh, outfit that appears in her room and it's all ripped up. I mean, just yeah. so many things kept progressing and progressing to seeing the monster and getting mm -hmm. up close and personal with the monster that I being out in the woods and taking a picture of the monster, like every, everything, yeah. just, everything just makes me nervous just talking about it. it, it I think mm -hmm. that's probably why it, it scared me more. Mm -hmm. um, was because I knew that that timeline would, like I knew eventually we were gonna, something was gonna happen, you know? And For so sure. I think it just stressed me out playing. Yeah. I was like, knew something would occur. But yeah, yeah. I, I totally see what you're saying though about, about that though. Mm -hmm. No, you make some like very excellent points. I totally agree. Like for, for Captive Curse though, like where, like where do you feel maybe like the most I don't know, panicked in this game. Like what's your, what's your moment of like spook, I guess. Yeah. For me, it's, it's the like most obvious jump scare of the game where oh, yeah. <laughs> the monster's in the courtyard, you can see it. And again, why does she do this? Nancy's response is I'm going to run towards the monster. <laughs> yes. Nancy, get help or something like. Yes, for real. Yes. We need <laughs> Nancy help group. But the monster starts walking away and Nancy rushes after it. And then the gates close, thankfully. And then the monster just jumps out right in front of the gate and goes yes. and growls at her. Yes. That that went every <laughs> single time. I it love your impressions. Like, okay. I love your thank impressions. You. Thank you very much. Very <laughs> yeah, um, it gets me every time. Yeah. Which one for you though? Uh, okay, so for me, which that, okay, by the way, speaking of that, yes, that is most certainly the spot I think that I jumped the most, you know, yeah. was that spot. Um, I think for me, it was just the, like, just over again, just the overall, just knowing that the monster was coming, but mm -hmm. like, you know, like the monsters in the building and, yeah. you know, oh, okay, the monsters in the building, we need to leave the building. Yes. You know, <laughs> there, there's just so many times where they just trick you into thinking that you're gonna see the monster and then you really don't. Or, you know, uh, and I think all of those times combined for me just gave me overall just spook, you know, um, and unease. And so I guess I don't really necessarily have maybe like a specific moment. It was really just the overall like game just out, yeah. you know, playing out over time. It just the really got me. The successful ambiance. Yes, it, truly. It just really got me, truly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. For sure. Um, so number five for me was actually Ghost Dogs and Moon Lake. Yeah, it, it ranked in the middle for me. Uh, and also too, this was um, one of my earlier games that I played. I think this was like number th three or four on the list. Sure, sure. Um, and I think, <laughs> excuse me, this game for me, the Purposeful Unease, actually it was, I, I gave Purposeful Unease a three. I gave it the most points. And then Spooky Elements and in Music and Environment, I gave a two. And yeah. so, yeah, no, dog, the, the ghost dogs in Moon Lake. I mean, 
just starting the game uh, initially it's that initial start of the game that really gets you i think mm -hmm. um that really sets the tone and gets you you know spooked uh for the rest of the game mm -hmm. but you know um that purposeful unease that's really what i think spooked me the most because it was just you know we see the see the dogs at the very beginning of the game and we literally never see them again until the end and mm -hmm. the whole time all <laughs> i thought would happen is dogs would appear at any given moment and get me uh yes. in the woods at night in the cemetery at night like I just, you know, I mean, I was always trying to switch to daytime because I knew that when night came, you were going to hear howling in the distance and you just never knew. So that purposeful and is definitely there. So there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, purposeful spooky elements and environment, I gave a two, mm -hmm. um, mostly because, I mean, we do have the, the nighttime scene in, in Ghost Dogs. Mm -hmm. but we also have daytime as well. So I felt a little bit more safer in this game because I was able to get to the daytime whenever I wanted, um, mm -hmm. you know, and generally the daytime was very pleasant, you know? Yeah. I mean, really nice music, birds are chirping, like, yeah. <laughs> like it's all Agreed. great, like boats blowing up. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it was great though. I mean, it, you know, you could, you know, travel across the lake. And so it was very like ambient was very there. Um, mm -hmm. It was very peppy, very happy. Yeah. So I, I mean, that was great. So I wasn't as, you know, maybe spooked during that. And then right. other than just that initial start scene of the mm -hmm. dogs, that's why I didn't really score the spooky elements a three was because right. I was like, well, I mean, yes, the beginning was, was spooky, but you know, other than it being nighttime and if you're like far out into the cemetery of the woods, there's really like no other moments where I felt like to me where I felt like mm -hmm. there was um you know purposely like spooky like I'm gonna get you moment yeah. you know so I right I, yeah I think that's why I ranked it that way and it kind of felt just like just a nice middle a middle for me yeah what about you where's where's that for you yeah I gave it the exact same score as you a three okay. for purposeful unease and a two and a two for spooky elements and music and environmental details I gave it the number four spot so yeah just just a step higher for exactly the reasons that you mentioned um yeah. the the unease and like the anticipation throughout the whole thing that you might see the ghost dogs and that <laughs> you might get caught unawares in the woods like madly clicking to red knots platform <laughs> like run 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 <laughs> it's so true. And they, you can, which is nice. They actually designed it in a way where you can like very seamlessly run to red, which I appreciate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that anticipation, that unease is absolutely there. The only time that we have those purposeful spooky elements where they actually are there, you're right, at, only at the very beginning. Yeah. I do think the the end is also like very purposefully spooky, the culprit um, oh, confrontation. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> every time yes. she gets me she's actually who i'm channeling today with my plaid um hey yeah i know and i like woke up i don't hey we kind of you know put our fall colors on uh you yeah. know speaking of that um i yeah i woke up and i was like let me put on some uh green today so yeah, yeah that's funny. totally I, mean, I guess i'm channeling a little bit of my jeff acres but it's a little bit more green yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> good old jeff yes and that's probably my spookiest moment of um ghost dogs too i mean having to go outside after the initial attack for the first time at night oh, this was my God. second game and i actually had to stop playing it the first time <laughs> because i was so young and I, I couldn't work up the courage to go outside at nighttime yes so like i eventually was like okay this game is really cool i'm gonna be brave i can do it and i made my mom come and stand in the room with me like behind me oh i love so it. that if the ghost dogs did come she would she would save me of course so. so sweet. Okay. Yeah. No, now that you said that, I actually think I was the same way. I think I actually paused the game too yeah. and had to come back to it much later. I mean, yeah. I like, I, I don't think, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. with you. I was yeah. terrified. Mm -hmm. That's why it's one of, it's my second favorite game of all time. I love ghost dogs. <laughs> yes. And what, well, and the game is just so wonderful. Yeah. I love it. Um, but yeah, that is awesome. So definitely for me ghost dogs Moon lake cemetery was the most scariest oh place. yeah i mean that or 
I, uh, blech, being out there at night, it just still gives me these like just mm-hmm. spooky vibes. Like I just don't know what's gonna be out there. And it, it was very like, I think Her Interactive did a really great job at designing a, like a maze kind of out of the yeah. woods. Mm-hmm. Um, still get lost in that in that in those woods i think i try and think of the map of it but like like i can totally remember like other layouts of games and like where the directions go but those woods like they're very well designed to be you know make you lost and so i remember at times when i had to be outside in the cemetery at night in the game oh my goodness and getting lost and then like it just oh the anticipation even more because like you're trying to get out but you can't Ooh, yeah. No, no. So the yep. cemetery for me in the woods area, that was probably the spookiest moment for me yeah. you know, in the game is having to be outside during that. Totally. And the paw prints on his crypt. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, chills talking about it. Um, but what about you for this game? The just kind of like you said, like having to be in the woods at night was absolutely terrifying. Couldn't do it for the longest time. And then the, the end culprit confrontation, um, always scares me so much. (laughs) I'm always so worried. I'm going to click in the wrong place and I'm going to get got. And it's, yeah, it's, it gets my heart racing every time. It's one of my favorite endings in the entire series. (laughs) Yes. Like I'm telling you, Harry, Emily, I, I said this, so I actually uh, ranked all of my, all of the like the culprits in the games. And I, like Emily for me, I, I ranked her, but I like, you know, when we were talking about her, I was like, oh man, I don't know why, but like, I love Emily as, as a culprit. She's so like her niceness, but then at the end, that ending is so like spooky because yeah. like, you're just like, whoa, where'd all the niceness go? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like a normal person who's like genu- genuinely very friendly, just yes. flipping in that way. That idea yes. is really scary. Yes, absolutely. A thousand percent. When she comes at me <laughs> with the big bone, I was terrified. I was like, oh, this lady, no. It yes. Back to be nice. <laughs> yes. Stomach literally drops. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> dive into the sewer here we go <laughs> yes take me back to the boat right now yeah, please. yes oh that's a, that's funny yes all right so let's go ahead and switch over to our number four spot and i'll pass it to you caitlin good and my number four was ghost dogs of moon lake okay okay yeah yeah so and for all of the reasons mentioned and what was and your number no, four my number four was actually curse of black more manor so oh, we've nice. actually kind of talked about both of those so awesome. oh okay, good deal and then oh. my number three was actually that was the captive curse oh. so yes so i actually gave captive curse which i know we've talked about it but just mm-hmm. as far as my scoring i gave captive curse a three in unease a three in spooky elements and sure. two in music and environment yeah, and um i totally see that yeah like i i think just for me the music and environment i mean like the environment was overall i think generally spooky mm-hmm. um like with the woods and the courtyard area but we did have that other half where it was like being inside was very like calming and right. warm and the threes for me really just came from the fact that we three because we don't know when the monster's coming we get yes. plenty of un just you know hints throughout the game that it is approaching but mm-hmm. like when yeah. <laughs> like just get it i just wanted like just oh let's get this moment over with and then mm-hmm. three uh purposeful spooky elements just because like the well going through the wells that's spooky the the outfit that's been like all like mauled up that spooks me like the alerts spook me so I felt like I had a healthy amount of spook given to me throughout the game so that's that's where it scored for me was number three because I remember Mm -hmm. definitely having uh just anxious feelings about when when in this game would the terrifying moment unfold and there were plenty of moments where i thought it was coming and then it really wasn't it was just lucas it was just lucas dressed up like the monster or you know what i mean and it just and it just wouldn't get there and i was like oh my goodness this game is killing me right now i just need to see the monster and be done (laughs) 
Yes. So, yep. Um, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it scored for me. Where was mm -hmm. your number three spot? So my number three, and again, this might be a surprise for people. This might be a little controversial was shadow mm -hmm. at the water's edge. Okay. And it oh, kind of okay. like I mentioned, right. <laughs> kind of like I mentioned before, if, if I'm talking about scary games, yes. this one takes the cake. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. The only reason it didn't get perfect threes across the board for me, which my top two games did get top uh, threes across the board, was because of the music and environmental details. Yep. I think the purposeful unease and the purposeful spooky elements were threes hardcore. Any of the Ryokan scares, like, holy cannoli, I'm terrified. Like, <laughs> that's so scary. Yes. And the, the lights flickering, the doors opening, the spooky garden, everyone, like, Refusing to talk directly about what happened creates that feeling of purposeful unease for sure. The music in the Ryokan is very spooky, very scary, very unsettling. <laughs> and then we go to um, Kyoto and the music is is so fun. Like I love those tracks. They're some of my favorite in the series. Oh, absolutely. But it's, it's like separating from the Ryokan and having those different moments of like, which I like seeing the modern side of Japan and the more traditional side of Japan. I think both of that is really cool. Um, that just made it less spooky overall for me. Like it wasn't spooky the whole time, I guess. Huh. Very scary. Yes. No denying that. Um, but that's why I had to give it the number three spot. That's why I couldn't quite give it threes across the board. Okay. so. Yeah literally my exact same reasoning <laughs> that you said um i actually scored uh shout out water's edge the exact same oh, threes in the same category and two in music and environment details because of those same reasons i think that going to make bento in the train station and the art and the yeah and the pachinko is that how you say it P pachinko? pachinko pachinko machine yes that love yeah. those you know really happy colors and happy mm -hmm. music that was great yeah. you know and definitely and i and i think that game had to have that because right. if it did not i mean you would literally constantly be on edge the entire mm -hmm. time so it was great yeah. to have those you know spots you know just to go back and maybe kind of break have a break from yeah. the spookiness you know totally. and, you, and you really you really needed it you, you really mm -hmm. did because there were times where um so i actually just made this post and and, and people had on, on instagram and people had mentioned in the comments they were like oh yeah shout out water's edge no i go do all of the puzzles at the train station or yeah. i go do all the puzzles you know what i mean and yeah. i'm like oh no that's perfect because like you don't want to be sitting there trying to do a you know nonogram puzzle and you're got this music in the background like dun dun yeah <laughs> not, 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 <laughs> yes. like, that is not puzzle music you know no. <laughs> um so i i think that's a great point that the music mm -hmm. does give you a nice relaxing kind of break from that scary for mm -hmm. sure yeah yeah and actually so for you said shout out waters edge was your third spot right, right? Mm -hmm. okay so shout out waters edge was actually my second spot so nice. again we're we're always very close in our rankings it's yeah. always usually like one swap so right. it was it was number two for me nice. um so do you want to share like what in shadow at water's edge just <laughs> <laughs> what in shadow at water's <laughs> edge is just your top like moment where you're just like oh my gosh this is so spooky Gosh, it's it's so hard to pick between the mirror scene and the drowning scene because right. both are absolutely terrifying. And like one of my greatest memories in life, I played a lot of the Nancy Drew games with my brother okay. and um, we were both older at this time. Like I was probably 15, 16 and he was he's like three or four years younger than me. So he would have been like 12 or something. Oh, so we're cool. sitting here <laughs> during the drowning scene, like just finishing this giant puzzle. So your your brain is not at all primed for a scare at this moment because you've been working on this puzzle right. that literally takes hours. <laughs> yes. So we're sitting here and then we turn around and there she is. She grabs you, she pulls you into the pool. My brother and I literally grabbed each other like Scooby-Doo style and we're like, <sighs> 
<laughs> but likely so because that is terrifying it's so scary and I just I love that moment I love that memory of how effective that scare was so I, I probably oh. overall go with the drowning scene even though mirror scene is absolutely iconic oh absolutely I actually that was my exact same like spookiest moment in the game was that same thing because I mean like you said you're not ready for this. Like you were just not ready for this. But also I think if anything, this was probably the most invasive scare we had ever had, you know, an invasive spooky thing that had ever happened thus far in the Nancy Drew series, because this ghost, you know, was literally this close. I mean, you, you could see like details like so clearly of the face. Mm -hmm. And I think that was what was just so spooky. I mean, everything else that had happened in previous games were very um, like a little bit more distant. I, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I think this was their first time that they really experienced let's truly <laughs> terrify these people like let's really give them a really good spook yeah. a good scare so i agree with you 100 percent on that that is such a good point and i never thought about that because you're absolutely right most of the scare factor nancy never actually gets touched like she's yes. things are far away or culprits will like move towards her like i'm gonna i'm gonna get you but you never actually see it Oh, it yeah. full on grabs her and like yes. shoves her into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, actually, I I I don't don't even remember where I like read this or saw this, but I think her interactive actually had to have its rating changed for this game for that reason. Makes um, sense. I think it was gonna be like I don't know how they I think E for everyone or something like that, and then it sure. ended up being like you had to be a specific age and older because sure. of that one moment because yeah. there had never been something that had grabbed Nancy. So yeah, right. I think that that is why they had to rate that. I know, I know, chills, Ooh. right? It's just so like, ugh, yes. But I remember feeling very spooked at that moment. So, so totally agree with you. So good. So what, so I know that Shout Out Water's Edge was my number two and i think mm -hmm. you said message in a haunted message mansion. in a haunted mansion yep right was your yeah two. okay so we're at our number one spot right which appears to be the same game yes we both ranked uh the same game as number one so i you want to go ahead and talk about number sure. one yes, sure yes go for it ghost of thornton hall mm. iconic yes <laughs> extremely scary and also extremely spooky. Absolutely. Threes across the board um, pretty easily for me. I, I've i always had the opinion that like, Shadow at the Water's Edge has the scariest moments in the Nancy Drew series, but I feel like Ghost of Thornton Hall is the scariest game as a oh, whole. As, absolutely. As a complete That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. So just, I mean, there's so many scary moments that we could list, but just the, the Charlotte scares I think are done so well and what I really appreciate about the Charlotte scares is they're not predictable they don't follow like a pattern so there are times when I play the game and I don't get certain scares like they just don't happen and then I might play it the next time and they do and I'm not expecting them because they didn't happen the last time okay, and it, it just kind of depends point. where Nancy is in time and space and I love that the purposeful unease with the fog everywhere and those like southern trees hanging over in the entrance the graveyard the crypt the burnt house oh my gosh yeah everything about it is spooky spooky heaven oh my gosh yes so like first of all that's so crazy that we ranked this game both yes. as our number one spot and like i totally agree with you on everything you said because i i ranked the game the same way it was three across the um board for me and completely agree with you like I, I don't think i had ever noticed that so like yeah you do actually get spooked at different times throughout the game or they may not even happen at all so i think yeah you're right i think that definitely gives this game something special and spook factor that no other game has um but i remember when they were at advertising for this game and really you know pushing for this game and just the cover art in itself i could tell i was like oh this is going to be a game right here like this is going to yes. be a very spooky game and just starting it out um on the 
well, actually, I think it doesn't start with a phone call, right? With Savannah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Great, great introduction. Yeah. And then on the boat, eerie Iron Gate, like, and uh, you have to walk down that long, creepy. I mean, like, great. Mm -hmm. Like the environment so is so good. Um, and I know for me, this whole entire game. So there's actually not one place other than. I guess what would be considered maybe the basement that's the yeah. most lit spot but even there yeah. it's still incredibly creepy but yeah no this whole entire game is dark i would right. i would maybe argue to say this is probably the darkest game that has mm -hmm. been developed in this entire series like yeah. it is a great phenomenal game mm -hmm. for sure yeah. So I don't know what your, what was your just, was there like one specific moment in this game that was just really terrifying for you? Or? Sure. It's yeah. All of the Charlotte scares, it's so hard to pick like a favorite one because they're all so good. Oh, but absolutely. I think the, the one in the upstairs hallway, it's one of the first Charlotte haunts too, yeah. but she, she holds her hand out like this and like moves toward Nancy. <laughs> like a vampire in the sims <laughs> and she just like she just walks towards us and nancy in classic nancy fan fashion does nothing she stands there right. and lets charlotte like haunt towards her with her hand outstretched like she's about to touch her and that one just always gets me because she gets so close to us and my the music gets all scary and my heart is just my heart's pounding even thinking about it right now <laughs> it's so so scary yes and same for me, like, it's definitely hard to pick a Charlotte scare because there are so many that were effective. But I know when we had to kind of explore that house that had been kind of like, you know, burned, that was absolutely terrifying because, you know, you just don't, you don't know, like, what's going to be there. And the idea of going into a burned house is already like spooky enough, you know? Yeah. And then to get there and you see Charlotte, you know, just up the stairs, you know, like singing as she does, terrifying. And also when Nancy passes out and we see her burn to a crisp, I mean, it's just, oh my goodness. It's just, there's so many in this game, but also not even just Charlotte either. Like I know like Harper kind of spooks me a little bit too at times. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of just overall spook in this game. So that mm -hmm. makes perfect sense that it would be number one in terms of spooky factor, I feel like. I absolutely agree. Yes. Okay. Well, hey, so that was all of our rankings. I think we've been through all of our games, gotten to share our scores and our favorite scare moments. So that was really, really uh, like satisfying, Caitlin, to do yes. during spooky season. Yeah. Yes. Um, so thank you again so much for joining here on this channel and collaborating and uh, just sharing your thoughts and opinions on spooky games. I always, always appreciate to hear your thoughts on things and to watch your content. So thanks for hopping on our channel and uh, really appreciate it. We'll have to totally do this again. This was so fun, for sure. Agreed, um, thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely, like, thank you. And also let me go ahead and say, um, we do have another spooky video that is going to be on uh, Caitlin's channel, Wizard Kitten. Um, and it is going to be uh, similar to this same video where we rank games, spooky games, but in a different like style. So we're gonna be ranking the more like underrated spooky games, like games that are spooky without explicit spooky like labels on them so that is going to be oh i'm so excited about that one i think that's such a great idea that was caitlin's idea so um yeah looking forward to it so you guys gotta go check out her channel it is so great um but again thank you caitlin for being on this channel today totally Absolutely. enjoyed spending some time doing this oh same thank you so much all right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, um, make sure to check out Wizard Kitten's channel and we will hopefully see you on another video sometime soon.